Hello, my name is Leopold Armesto and in this video I will show how to control multiple servos using the Dynamixel 2 Arduino library. And actually what I have is two servos, as you can see here. Uh, they are XL330M288 uh, model. And this is actually servo with ID2 and this is the servo with the ID1. And servo 2 is connected to 1 and 1 is connected to the open rb150 board as you can see here okay so uh, here you can see the code i have prepared in order to control the servos uh, basically this code it it can be used for multiple servos but you, you just need to extend this uh, definition here and obviously uh, adapt uh, the size of the arrays here but the the idea is that you can set the ids here you can set the positions you want to go in here um, this is the default position let's say 2088 and then I send in uh, the servers to different positions 123 and 3 uh, sorry 1023 and 3071 and I'm doing this alternatively um, so the program actually begins by configuring the servo in position mode so for that I need to uh, disable the torque I set the drive mode so I can control a trajectory, uh, a timed trajectory. So I can set the the overall time in order to reach the goal. So this is the velocity profile, the trapezoidal velocity profile, and then here I specify the acceleration uh, time for this trapezoidal. Then I set or I, uh, the, the torque on and send this uh, servo to a specific position and this is the, the initial position as I said before. Then I enter into the Arduino loop and here I have a logic that allows me to modify the position every five seconds. So for that I'm monitoring the current time and until this, uh, I'm just simply checking if this is uh, bigger or not that to 5000 and if, if it's bigger then I do something and at the end of it I just simply update the last update variable so the next time I execute the loop I will check again this uh, condition here and I will have to wait for 5 seconds. Uh, in here what I have is an alternate uh, case in which I execute this code here or this code here. Actually, this code here should never been executed. I just put it here just uh, just in case, but it shouldn't be executed because the variable, the switch case here, the alternate case, I'm always uh, performing the modulus uh, with two, so that means that it will be, it will return zero or one. I'm increasing the value and returning zero or one. So uh, in case is zero, then what I'm doing here is just setting the position to the new goal one position for each of the servos. And in case two, or sorry, in case one, then I'm sending or setting the position to Q goal two. Okay. Uh, let's see what happens when I blow this code. Uh, in the meantime, here I just simply have to say that I'm printing over the serial uh, uh, bus all uh, the signals I want to show you such as the current position, trajectory and the goal positions of each of the servos. Okay, so let's see what happens. Here uh, I have changed the goal positions, these are the trajectories and the blue line and the yellow one are the positions for the first servo and the second servo. And as you can see, they are moving synchronously or basically synchronously. And this is uh, how it looks like when I uh, set or change the things, uh, the, the, the goals, then uh, everything moves uh, synchronously, let's say. But actually, it's asynchronous because if for whatever reason I introduce some kind of artificial delay, let's say 300 milliseconds, uh, in which I take uh, this artificial delay it's uh, done so that uh, between the setting of one of the uh, positions and the another one there's a time let's say a computational time of whatever thing you need then in that case the movement is not synchronous the first servo will start moving first and then 300 milliseconds will start moving the second one okay 
So let's see what happens. So now you will see that, as you can see, the second servo moves, but in the meantime, the first servo was already moving. So I'm just simply plotting the current uh, positions here from, from this point of time. But as you can see, they are not synchronized anymore due to the delay. OK, so as I said, this is actually an asynchronous uh, movement. So if we want to have a synchronous movement, then we have to execute this code here. In this code, uh, the main difference is that I have defined it a variable. This type of variable is param for sync write inst underscore t, and it's called sync write param. And this variable allows me to prepare all the data I need in order to set the goal of the positions for each of the servos and then with one single instruction move them all and at the same time okay so the main difference is in here in which I'm just preparing uh, this uh, variable here the data that, I, that this variable needs such as the address this 116 uh, position refers to the goal position you can see in the parameter table that, uh, of this server that corresponds to this value here uh, this uh, actual value actually means uh, uh, it takes four bytes so this this length should be four and I'm indicating here the number of servers that I want to move synchronously and here the IDs the position of the servos I modify the position of the servos here in a, in the um, in, inside each uh, of the cases of the switch case with this mem copy I'm just simply assigning each of the elements of this QGOL one into this memory here data memory here and I can do that for each of the servos and once I'm done then I can do the seek write instruction that will actually move all servos at the same time okay as you can see here I'm moving to QL1 and here to QL2 Q goal two as before so let's actually move directly or pr execute this code with an artificial delay and let's see the difference between the previous example and the synchronous one okay there it is so now uh, we will see what happens and now after five seconds we'll start the movement and here it is and both servos are synchronized again despite of the artificial delay between setting or computing the goal positions okay thank you very much